roll. This is Tony Sheena, owner of Mosaic Security, a private military company that provides elite forces level security for their clients. Tony has a VIP coming into Caracas tomorrow, who will need to guard. We tagged along as he scouted out a particularly dangerous neighborhood that we'll need to pass through in the morning. It's called the Triple X Barrier. The main issue with this client is we need to pick him up at point A, the airport, and deliver him to his meeting at the military installation. But there's no circumventing this. These guys should be flanking on each side. Okay, he's already seen a potential shooter. Considering the police claim 25 people are shot in this barrier a day, the armed person they spotted was not taken lightly. Come, come, come. This is the wrong place to be. Fall out, guys. Okay, let's go. We took a little detour looking for a, an additional route out the main road because it was too dangerous. <laughs> Although we were able to get out without incident, it was clear that tomorrow's security was going to need to be very serious. We're at an airport about to extract a client. So the idea is that we've got to get him from here to go to meet a government contractor. There's been a number of attempts on his life, so you know tensions are running a little bit high. Everybody recover, recover, recover. So uh, there's been two or three attempts in your life? Two. 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 You just need to be careful and act uh, accordingly. For the business that you work in, you wouldn't be able to operate without these guys taking you through countries? No. I wouldn't feel safe. It is like having a top private army because not only is the, the quantity, but they are quality. I'm in a little war, and when I land in this country, uh, I'm at war, and then that's why you need to use these um, good bad guys. While providing highly trained security for VIPs like Pablo is one role PMCs play, it's really just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, the international private military industry has been exploding over the last 20 years. To find out more about this new modern world of mercenaries, we spoke to P.W. Singer, author of the book Corporate Warriors, The Rise of the Privatized Military Industry. A private military company, a PMC, is private companies taking on roles that have traditionally been done by the military and intelligence agencies, by the broader national security complex. We have this assumption of war and who fights it. A man in uniform, and that uniform to us means, well, they're part of a national military. And when you look at the 21st century, that image in our mind, it just doesn't hold true. And these companies have taken on all the different roles of war, everything from the back-end logistics to training and consulting to the tactical battlefield roles. Pretty much it's the new American way of war. Whether you're talking about Iraq or now Afghanistan, roughly half of the force there is private military. In fact, business is so good that the global market for private security services is projected to reach $218 billion in 2014. And as more and more aspects of modern war and security are outsourced to PMCs, these companies are poised to grow even larger. Outsourcing is always about cost savings. It's the number of people that you don't have to call up from your National Guard and reserves to take on these roles. Deaths, injuries, capture of private military contractors doesn't resonate into the political world the same way it does for someone in the military. So we're seeing everything from companies that have been operating in Iraq now doing things like counter piracy operations off Somalia to the emergence of Chinese private security companies operating in Africa, or the Russians use private contractors during their Crimea operation. When we look at the future frontiers of the private military industry, they reflect the next frontiers of war. To find out more about this massive industry that is fast becoming the future of war, we spoke to the man that almost single-handedly created the modern PMC as we know it. We're here in Abu Dhabi and we're going to interview one of the most important people in the PMC world, Eric Prince. He was the founder of Blackwater. 
PMCs are as American as, uh, as Thanksgiving Day. First colonies were started by contractors. They were hired to secure the logistics of private companies. Massachusetts Bay and Plymouth colonies were, uh, were private endeavors. You know, look, I started Blackwater as a way to stay connected to the SEAL teams. When our customers called us, we ran very hard to fill their needs. We were mischaracterized as out-of-control mercenaries. And the fact is, we were American veterans serving America again, getting paid on a competitively bid contract. Full stop. We did exactly the job the U.S. government hired us to do. And did it well. More than 100,000 missions on the security side, no one under our care ever killed or injured. For a first-hand look to see what it takes to become a soldier for hire, we traveled to the Czech Republic to the Anti-Terror Academy, a former military base which is now one of the most popular security training facilities in Europe. This is where future PMC soldiers are going to be freshening up their skills before they go out and work. In theory, even people like me can do these training courses and basically be guns for hire. Make sure you focus on that foresight, okay? Squeeze in the trigger. Although they're willing to train beginners like me, it was clear that a vast majority of the guys there were former elite military running through combat drills. How did you get into all of this? So I left the army because the money wasn't good enough for what I was getting paid to do. Why would I do five years in Iraq in the army and earn 120 grand when I can do two years in Iraq and earn 400 grand. Now, certainly in my era, anybody who was any good in the army isn't in the army anymore. The main goal in a facility like this is to take the elite skills these soldiers already have for offensive combat and reshape them to provide defensive, special forces level security and protection. The two guys behind, they just push out. But as I watched them run their drills, it was clear that these maneuvers were much more than just defensive. They aren't only learning to provide additional support and security, they are essentially becoming their own army. Nobody knows more about what it means to have private armies for hire than the world famous mercenary Simon Mann. After serving the British Special Forces, he spent over 20 years in the PMC industry until 2004 when he served five years in prison in Equatorial Guinea for his role in attempting to help stage a coup. A private military company to me is a company that is prepared to carry out full-on offensive military operations under a contract. Uh, you know, you pay us a load of money and we will help you win your war. Where I get worried is when you start saying, no, the way forward is for combat operations to be privatized and given out wholesale to the private sector. There are certain things that armies have to do and a way of doing them that should not be in the private sector. These guys are fighting for money. They're not fighting for the state. They're not fighting out of a sense of duty or patriotism. When it gets serious is if you get a PMC that starts to get excessively muscular. The line between defense and offense gets very quickly blurred. So immediately, any decent soldiers will start thinking, instead of sitting here waiting to be shot, why don't we go out there and bag the bad guys before they manage to shoot us? And suddenly, you know, the rules start to get bent. The further you look into the training around the world for PMCs, the more you realize that their public face is simply defensive security is only one side to their capabilities. So we're here to see Mick Cowan. He's a former sniper and he's now a PMC. He's asked us to keep his location secret because he just doesn't want people to know where this is going on. We're gonna spend a little bit of time with him to kind of find out what he does, how it all works. I operate as a consultant for a number of companies and I step in and, and provide the actual instructional ability. Simply put, he trains PMCs to be snipers using the latest military techniques and hardware. Basically an AR-15 M4 with a red dot sight on it. And it's not just about shooting accuracy. They also teach you how to blend in with your environment so your target doesn't even know you exist. Jed, you gotta be very low and slow. Oh. 
I'll check if I can spot him, and I will radio the walker. Okay, is that him in position again? Okay, roger. Is there any kind of contracts that come along that you just morally don't agree with and you don't take? Yeah, certainly uh, there would be jobs that I could see coming along that I would go, mm, thanks, but no thanks. But morality is down to the individual and down to the, the companies themselves. You'll always get people who are morally repugnant. You'll always get cowboys. But it's not only the moral question of who these cowboys might work for that makes many uneasy. For veteran journalist Robert Pelton, who witnessed the rise of the PMC in both Iraq and Afghanistan firsthand, it's a concern about their willingness to blur the lines if it serves their purpose. It is a myth to assume that contractors are aligned with governments and they synchronize. They actually have opposing goals. And there, and there are many cases in which contractors were actually arrested by the military in Iraq for doing exactly that, shooting at people, you know, causing a mess. Shot in front of him. He may have <laughs> ricocheted and hit his car, but... <laughs> It's security, but it doesn't seem like security because it's to keep them secure. But if I come up and punch you in the face and I say, that's for your protection, that's kind of the joke. You see fences going up, you see guard posts, you see people stopping you, and you say, that's not a police badge. And it's up to the public to decide whether they think the use of force by a non-state actor is appropriate. In fact, the actions of some PMCs has caused such an alarm that US Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky has introduced legislation to limit them from use in war zones altogether. There has been concern about using people who don't wear the badge of the United States of America, who are not part of a chain of command, who aren't held accountable in the same ways. I think what scares me the most uh, about these uh, private military contractors is that by and large, they operate in the shadows. The transparency isn't there, the accountability isn't there. It appears that these contractors literally may be able to get away with murder. When you consider that these companies might operate above the law, even while employed by the US government, the bigger question for New York Times Washington correspondent David Sanger is what happens when PMCs work completely outside the jurisdiction of America itself. One big concern for private military contractors is a question of allegiance. When they become political instruments to help prop up a government, that's when you begin to ask the question, does this corporation have a foreign policy of its own? And is that corporation's foreign policy in sync or in opposition to American foreign policy? Are they truly American or are they truly international? Who exactly are they working for? When the best and the brightest from armies around the world are now working for PMCs, you have to wonder if the next military superpower won't be a country, but a corporation. I think the PMC of the future can manipulate governments. We're at a stage now that I think it can happen.